As different as they are, one thing schools around the world have in common is that they aim to shape future leaders. This aspiration can usually be found, and rightfully so, in all of their mission statements. The truth is, however, it is not uncommon for its implementation to fall short, and for its impact and educational benefits to remain limited. All too often, student leadership only involves a small minority of high achievers, excluding most of the student body. Even for the happy few, student leadership can be positional more than anything else, or taken in such a broad sense as to encompass any and all sorts of student initiatives. The student council might organize fun events, and they do help build community spirit. But is that the best we can do in terms of student empowerment? Worse, without proper support, the leaders of student organizations can experience stress, low levels of success, and burnout, giving student leadership a bad name. Student leadership is important, and schools are certainly right to make it part of their mission. It can not only help students develop invaluable skills for the future, but, by enhancing their sense of ownership, it can also improve collective efficacy, belonging, and motivation. Doing so, it can help make schools, and indeed local and global communities better. But there are conditions that have to be met for a student leadership program to be effective. Indeed, and first of all, it needs to be a program, as it has the same requisites for success as your sports program, your arts program, or any of your curricular or co-curricular offerings. A simple way to represent these conditions is the nature, nurture, structure, and culture paradigm. By nature we mean that your school needs to start by defining clearly what it means by student leadership. You need a model with specific learning objectives. You could simply borrow from an existing one, such as the student leadership challenge. But there is also great value in creating your own. Engaging your community in this effort can help create the necessary culture and ensure that your model matches your school's unique identity. Next, nurture means turning your model into an ongoing training for students, allowing them to practice the necessary skills under proper guidance. Nurture thus also means that your staff should receive appropriate professional development, which can be a great way to improve their own leadership skills. Third, structure means that your school needs to develop a varied ecosystem where students can take on existing leadership opportunities and develop new ones. An example could be service learning clubs with partner organizations, flagship actions, and clear roles and responsibilities for their members. Structure also means that creating an effective program will require that you devote adequate resources and make room for student leadership in your schedule, PD, and curriculum. Finally, culture means that everybody in your school community must understand, embrace, expect, and promote student leadership if you want your program to be effective. This includes faculty, administrators, parents, and of course students. Nature, nurture, structure, and culture. Taken together, these four pillars will set up your student leadership program for success. But how can you create these conditions in the first place? Here are four tips that you might find useful. Tip number one, make it someone's job. This is really true for any school initiative to be successful, it needs to be a program, and someone needs to be in charge of it. This can be a team, of course, but it cannot be enough to say that it is everybody's responsibility. If this effort is not guided, supported, and promoted by anybody in particular, then it will likely be by nobody at all. To make a simple comparison, all teachers might be English teachers, but schools still have English departments and ESL teams, don't they? Tip number two, take it seriously yourself. As obvious as it sounds, a critical factor in the success of student leadership programs is an authentic, demonstrated belief in student leadership. Show your student council that you take them seriously by holding them to high expectations. If you want them to be a true representative body, treat them as such and involve them as appropriate through participatory school leadership. If they raise issues related to high levels of stress or bullying, for instance, task them with creating a peer counseling program with the support needed. And don't undermine them. If you need to survey the entire student body, leverage their work and dedication, don't bypass it. Tip number three, promote active membership. As much as you want to empower your student leaders, you also want to make each and every student feel like they matter. They might not all be formal leaders, but they should all develop facets of leadership, be it only private leadership over themselves, or active membership in student organizations and as part of your community. In particular, all have a crucial role to play in supporting leaders and each other. Final tip, start small, review often, and grow continuously. One of the many reasons why a model is necessary is because it will allow you to track your success over time. Does your program really help students grow as leaders? Do they become more effective over time?
does your program. Starting small will ensure you do not overextend yourself. Quick, visible wins will help create momentum and lead to exponential gains. It will also help you adjust as needed before you scale your program. Following these four tips to implement the four principles of nature, nurture, structure, and culture, your school should be in a much better position to shape future leaders. To help your students develop leadership skills, effective goal setting will be paramount. Just like student leadership, goal setting has great potential benefits, but also pitfalls and recipes for success. To learn more about them, make sure to check out our videos on the subject.